my name's John Wright. I'm a photographer, video maker, musician. Caffeine nicotine, yes, caffeine nicotine. We, we, we really love caffeine nicotine. It, um, uh, it allows us to <coughs> produce our own shoots and display them in a way that we want to display them. And it allows us to work with some really good um, designers, uh, graphic layout designers. Uh, unfortunately, it's a massive drain on resources. Not, 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 not even a financial drain, but just a, an energy drain. So what was going to be I think it was originally conceived as a monthly publication, then very quickly became clear it was going to be a quarterly publication, and then we settled on two a year, and I think we're coming round for the... <laughs> for, uh, it's going to be an annual publication. Um, Definitely, not by... <laughs> uh, I'd love to do it all the time, and, and I'd, I, I really want to... Um, I, I really want to open it up and not make it a, just a John Wright project. Um, it was so well received, something ludicrous like 120 um, unique visits in its first week online. Very, very well received. And, and I really, what I really want to do is use it to showcase other artists, other talents. Um, because of the medium, we've, we've retained that page turning uh, feel of a traditional magazine. And, and of course, as everyone you knows, it's really easy to incorporate video and, and, and music and just make it a sort of multi-dimensional thing. So I, I, I really, really would love to um, commit more resources to it. If anybody's watching this who wants to take part, it's it's a completely open forum. Um, uh, it, it will come again. I just won't make any empty promises about when it's <laughs> when it should be. Um, Yes, it does. You realise, um, however long it takes you, uh, to, I realise fairly quickly that you are, uh, I don't want to say restricted by the subject's persona, but you, you are confined by their persona. Um, and there are people that I pho photograph who have retained the same persona for 30 years. Um, and it works in two ways. One, they know what works and they know who they are, they know who that public persona is. Um, so they deliver it really, really, really quickly. And it, it would be folly in some of the people I photograph to try to, to try to take them somewhere else. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? It's, it's, prob it's probably both. Um, if, you, if, you can if you can manage to recognize who, what their persona is and what they want to deliver, and if you can just get your own little twist on it, your own little five percent, um, then suddenly you've done something really different, and you've surprised everyone. No, there was a there was a definite point at which I decided that this was what I wanted to do, and it was in my. What I did immediately prior to this was I, I was a, a reportage photographer. I did a lot of work in the third world um, with animal charities, humanitarian charities. And it had a really, really profound effect on me, a, a massively disillusioning experience. Um, and I think it certainly wasn't a conscious decision at the time, but I think that the further away that I get from that point at which I changed what I did, the more I think that... Um, this was the antidote to that. It was about stopping trying to change the world or fix the world with my camera. And it was just about entertaining people. Do you think if you carried on in that area that it would have affected you quite, quite traumatically? It did. it did. It did. It did. And I don't know how I could possibly have carried on in that, mm. in that arena. Because I realised that I was... that I was in fact exploiting dreadfully, dreadfully sad, people in terrible, terrible circumstances that I was actually exploiting them for photographic vanity. I certainly didn't set out on that road. Terribly, terribly disillusioned and very, very traumatic. Not so much witnessing what you witness, but the 
when it dawns on you what how you how you're you're not you're not you're not so much contributing to it, but you're you are exploiting it and manipulating people who look you in the eye and genuinely believe you're you're going to make a difference. And when you realise you're going to make absolutely fucking no difference at all, mm. I don't know how you proceed. To Uh, photograph for people. No, um, <laughs> I make music when I'm not in the photographic studio. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a, I sometimes say that photography is what I do, uh, music, being a musician is what I am. Um, are you, you going to be incorporating that into your career? It's actually, it's actually a plan for 2012 is to, is to re-present this, uh, Company again as a uh, as a provider of photography, video, and music, a producer of photography, video, and music. Um, the, uh, the musical project is under the title of Teenage Wildlife, um, and that will be incorporated into the brand to, to a certain extent. When do we all start talking about incorporating stuff into the brand? Good, yeah. Uh, Scotland's first comedy club. Yeah. Scotland's first comedy club. Bizarre, really bizarrely. Um, and at 19, and very quickly <laughs> went out of business, bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> we, s we booked two acts from London, both of which are now very famous, Hollywood famous. Flew them up from London in a motel. Uh, negotiated really high fees, but they were a bargain. Um, and we went and leafleted the two universities in Glasgow. Uh, but little did we realise that our opening night was right in the middle of exam week, and the turnout was absolutely atrocious, like really, really properly atrocious. Um, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it finished as visionaries crushed by the realities of freaking. <laughs> Education. And it was free then, you could still have come, but anyway, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was a short lived career as a comedy promoter. It's shifted in so many ways in the last, in the last decade. In the last decade, I'm. Uh, the last 20 years, certainly the last, I think 15 years ago, the, the ground opened up and our, our industry changed massively with the arrival, the, whole, the wholesale adoption of digital photography. Uh, a very, very sad thing that, um, that's kind of forgotten in, in, at, at this period, but was the death of the photographic printer. Um, oh, you know, <laughs> just overnight, just, just careers, absolutely stopped in their tracks. Businesses closing, you know, human beings had genuinely lost their livelihood um, overnight. Uh, and, and I saw people who were in that position um, devastated, you know, uh, terrible to look back on. So the, the digital camera has brought so many changes. Right now, where we sit now, I think our industry is completely fascinating. And we're in, a, we're in an industry where the value of our product is decreasing, the oversupply is massive, um, and with the growth of the internet, nobody knows what any of this is worth anymore, and we're, we're confronted with government papers um, uh, so, you know, introducing the death of the, 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 the rights of ownership by the author of material. Um, it's I, I, just incredible. It, it, we really are in the age of just think of a number, um, and it's kind of smoke and mirrors. No. Is that because you're already established? Do you think? I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know why it is. Our our client base has changed, and I think some clients who, for whom we. Um, 
prior to the end of 2008, we did a lot of work for. Um, there were some clients, as literally as the call was flooded in, saying our rates are going down, our rates are going down. There were some clients where you had to say, well, no, because of what I was alluding to, but you know, how much is it worth to do this for that client type thing? Um, is it because we're established? I don't really know why it is. It would be easy to say, to, for anybody to think that it's because we're, because we're good or, or it's because we're special. I don't think that we're any more special at producing photographs than many of my peers. We, we work, and, and I often use the term we, a lot of people will think this is me, but this is a company, this is a, company, this is a group of people who, who make what you see. Blyka approached me, it was absolutely bizarre, it was a call out of the blue. Um, Blyka approached me because they were going to make a move into the professional market and they wanted somebody to work with to, to, um, to launch the, the Leica S2, um, which people in the industry will uh, be aware of. Um, we partnered with Leica and we partnered with Nikon. Um, those are my two com corporate partners and I'm very careful not to blog or tweet facile remarks about how wonderful their brands are. I use them, they're both you know, both make fantastic products and I'm really fortunate to, it's pretty unbelievable actually that I've got two partners which are like and Nikon. Well, photography, my main inspiration. It's funny. I was thinking of it. Somebody asked me this question the other day, and, and I had, I had, I had, and I think it's definitely had. I don't, don't think I any longer have. I fact, I had three inspirations, and I'll name one of them. One that somebody, would, would, uh, well, I'll name them all. But one of them would be really kind of my inspirations were uh, a chap called Andrew Eccles, who might be a who, but he, um, he was. He has for a long time been, I don't know if it still exists, but it used to be the, the Kodak 100 most important people in photography. And Andrew was always in there, he's an American photographer. And if anybody looks at Andrew Eccles' site, they'll see echoes of him, certainly in the early stuff that I did. Perhaps it's still the end of everything that I do now. But he's a profoundly talented photographer and he, he is a celebrity portrait photographer. And I think the style, I think he inspired me in terms of style and just also looking at his work, the volume, the body of work that he did, I thought you, you don't just need to do this, you don't just need to photograph these people once every blue moon, you can actually, you can actually do this, this can actually be what you do full time. So he was a massive inspiration. Um, <clears throat> another inspiration, definite inspiration to me was a chap called Graham Jepson who is a portrait photographer and in my newspaper days I uh, used to be used to photo, photo edit on newspapers and Graham used to, to shoot for us and he just always sent in a quality of work that was just just quality wise just a notch above everybody else in terms of portraiture. Yes, Graham Jepson, he was I, I think he's moved to Australia now and he's just most people would perceive him as a jobbing photographer but I still think he's a special talent. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm glad that I, I got to see his work. Uh, and the other, the other guy who inspired me was a guy called Joe McNally, who, um, who has now, now seems to have gone on to more of a, a sort of speaking role, um, the seminars and stuff like that. I, I don't know, perhaps that's a misrepresentation, perhaps he's still working very hard. But he, he, he showed me that you could light with flash guns something that I still do regularly, um, as well as various bits of studio lighting. Um, so yeah, Joe McNally, Andrew Eccles and, and good old Graham Jepson. Uh, advice for anybody looking to become a portrait and or fashion photographer. Pay attention to to what is commercially successful. Don't be sidetracked into some romantic creativity trip. Um, you, successful artists are commercially successful artists. Um, so pay attention, look at pictures, and don't do loose interpretations of them. Learn to understand what it is about a picture that makes it work. 
and recognise sometimes that it works because it's got Michael Jackson in it and without Michael Jackson in it it's just a picture of a bloke um, it's important to see that and, and, and you can just you can't just open Vogue um, and then get your sister's friend to be your model and it's going to look like that it's not it's going to look like a picture of your sister's friend and if it's lit with flash you can't just light it in the garden um, because however much you might think that it looks like it it doesn't it doesn't so start off with what's accessible um, and aim high aim really 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 high uh, and the best bit of advice in this whole industry is persistence wins. Persistence kicks talent's head in any day of the week. Every every single day of the week. Um, we are, I am where I am because I was determined and persistent and focused, not because I'm good. I may also be good at what I do, that's for other people to judge. But, but it's really, really, really the former that has, um, that has made us who we are. Excellent. John Wright, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure.